back to Everyday Struggle. Deska here with Academics and Wayno. What's going on, gentlemen? Good morning, Act. Good morning, Des. What's the deal? Good morning. How y'all been? I'm good. I feel great. Yeah, right. Wayno always feels great. I feel great. <laughs> When I was the chattiest person ever in the morning, I and I be struggling to find our words before the cameras turn on. Yeah, man, I don't want to talk to nobody until the cameras turn on. <laughs> yeah, you're like the I come here, I got whole conversations, giggling, laughs. I'm like, these these people are good. I'm, I'm a, hum I'm a human being, okay? I like I like to talk to other human Wayno beings. Wayno is a human being. Yes. You know, man. But All right, y'all. It's a sleepy Tuesday here, but we're gonna get into this. Let's have some fun. So, like we said, a ton of music dropped over the weekend. We couldn't talk about too. every. Oh yeah, it's also raining. It's like a very sleepy day. Um. <laughs> But back to the music. Yes, a lot of albums dropped that we couldn't get to on Monday's episode. So today we're going to start with Trippy Red. So less than three months after dropping his debut album, Life's a Trip, he's back with another project called A Love Letter to You 3. We heard the lead single Topanga. Let's listen to a snippet of Love Scars 3. All right, Wayne, I'm going to start with you. I know when Trippy Red drops an album, you're not necessarily like sprinting uh, to your computer or phone to listen. So what'd you think? Yo, what's really like, I'm, what's bugging me out is that. You got in touch with your emotions here? No, I really listened to this shit, right? Like I really was like, all right, let me like really listen. And surprisingly, I, I, I like this shit. Like I, I couldn't believe it. Like, like for real, I really couldn't believe that I actually liked it because the first project I ever, well, the first music I ever really listened to from Trippy was the one that he dropped earlier. I can't the, remember the, the name. The full album? Like yeah, it was. That? Like, that's the one where he, that's earlier this year, right? That's yeah. the one we reviewed prior. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I didn't like it at all. You know what I mean? I was very vocal about like not liking it, but um, I actually do like this. I'm know? surprised. What was the difference? Did you like the original track, Love Scars? This is like the I third don't know. one. What the fuck? That was like his first big song. Never heard it. Okay. I never heard it. I mean, like I never really got into his music or really gave his music a chance. Um, so what was different this time around then? Honestly, for me, it was like somewhat of the production. Like it was, it was, it was the production. And I might be wrong. I might not be listening to this this one the way everybody else listening to the last one. I'm not really used to his music, but it was the production. Also, I, I felt like he stayed away from like those weird ass that he makes. I mean, he did it a few times, but it wasn't as intense as before. Mm. And like, I fuck with this drum with NBA Youngboy on it. Like uh, the first, maybe like the first half of it. Towards the end, I was like, all right, he kind of losing me a bit. But listening to it from the start up until like towards the end is when I started to get, I, I got disinterested around like the later songs, but that was like by the time I got to 13. Okay, you know? that's pretty good then. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's out of actually good. Tracks. I, out of 16, and I feel like I would listen to it again. That's the biggest thing. I feel like I would actually listen to this shit again. Okay. It's you know? pretty impressive. Ak, what do you think? That shit was really good. Um, you know, he fits in this weird lane of, even though the, the singing annoys you sometimes, it's still kind of like what you call, it's a hybrid of what emo, rap, or trap is. Mm -hmm. uh, I especially liked it because, you know, um, he went through a very public breakup. He was with a very disloyal chick who, um, Crossed him for like his Hold enemy. On. No, Are you in his relationship though? His yeah. whole the whole thing is for about his relationship. <laughs> you have to be right. So like the, the the entire the entire album is about somebody. Like I think y'all listen y'all be listening to mumble rappers thing did us right by anything. When Uzi made Love Is Rage too, that was about a very public that was just relationship. Kind yeah, of, that was kind no, of wild. No, but no, because I, no, no, I remember when I said that was a breakup album. And everybody was like, what? No, it was, it was a breakup. Are you talking to us or the internet right now? No, I said it on the show. People didn't believe it. This, I don't give. A, but the thing is, I don't really give the, a fuck about the, who he break it up with. No, 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 no. Oh. This, this was. As he's gotten a lot of public scrutiny for that. Something for his which, breakup. Yeah, yeah. About how everything went down. Something that he really he couldn't win by responding to anywhere but here. So hearing hearing all these songs, hearing songs like. Like I try, like he's literally explaining the the motions and how he felt. It's a very personal album. This is very personal to, like, him being this vulnerable allows me to understand why he says shit like I make timeless music, because you know, like when 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 albums are this personal, and not only. First of all, breaking up in relationships, that's something that's, that's a relatable yeah. factor. Yeah, it's a very you. relatable yeah. factor, right? This is something that if you in a similar situation, you could probably listen to and it's it'll hit you. So listen to some of these tracks, I was like, 
it, I kind of understand why, number one, he hasn't been... Who I, broke your heart, act? Ain't nobody break my heart, <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie. I feel hurt for him. You I feel hurt for person. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said... the last person who connects with this shit, and now he's like, nah, trying man. to wipe his finger. Hold on, hold on. This shit's like, this shit speaking like, to his soul. Just like even with Juice Rose's project, when he, he's rapping about heartbreak, I'm telling you, like, uh, this, this felt personal, and it, Life's a Trip felt like he was going through the roads to success and experiencing new shit and also reminiscing a bit, right? This is okay, I'm here, but I'm also seeing things change, people change, and even my personal situations, which is now public because now I'm a star. Mm -hmm. Shit's falling apart and I'm gonna make music about it. I'm glad he addressed it through art. Yeah. Because I think, you know, he was looking a little bit crazy on social media. Act with the full on break. Yo, his emotions. No, I love it. I'm, yo, yo, I'm, yo, you hit around the mid, like, Love Scars 3. Yeah, I like Super it. Dope. But, but that's why I was like, honestly, I don't even know why he dropped that last shit. Like, I I, I, I like that. He, I, the only thing I would say, because you see, the last album, mm -hmm. there was two different, um, <laughs> there was two different, like, extremes he hit. Right. He was either rapping, rapping, or he was like really singing and sound like a dead goat, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, you're a doing too goat. much with that. Rap a little bit more. Mm -hmm. On this, like he was singing, but he didn't go to the extreme of like, uh, that he didn't do all that. <laughs> and to be honest, I felt like that was the perfect medium. And with the subject matter, which I thought was very personal, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, I'm, yo, I can't really get into an album if like all you're rapping about is lean for 16 tracks, bro. I'm like, Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah. tell us a story about I'm what happened yesterday. I'm a little stunned by you right now, to be honest. I, I didn't know listen. you were getting that deep into the music and connecting emotionally. What? Wait, 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 like literally, again, it's it's in a very new age type of way. He's not like married. You don't have to like defend it to me. <laughs> it's the kind of music I enjoy. I'm just stunned to hear about it coming from you. Act. That's all. Some a woman then put act through some shit. Are you sure? I don't see act, him have any emotions except tired. Look, <laughs> tired and maybe annoyed. Act is That's tapped it. in right now. He's all the way no, tapped in. No, no, no. I'm not gonna lie, yo. I've always said, and yo, but wait, I don't get why y'all are surprised. I sat on the show and I said. I felt Nicki's Queen album should have been her most personal album today. People are down you career-wise. I personally never I thought that she really fully expressed her emotions and how she processed breaking up with Meek. And I thought that that was she the album for it. She did that on the pinprint, I feel like. I feel like that was a whole, well, not Meek, but like maybe she didn't want to get into that. That, that was, was, that was, that was Safari personal. or some shit. I'm saying she did do it but, on that project. But, 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 but like, honestly, I love when like really having a deeper connection with um, the artist that you like's music is that all that shit you see online, like you gossip and whatever, like I like when, don't do an interview, don't get on Instagram addressing it, address it in the music, and I felt like for the most part he addressed everything he needed to do. And I like that's it. The, that, that, that's the girl that, that 6 9 did the little skit with? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he, that's the only thing. I don't know. That's, hurt. that's heartbreak, man. It's I like, love it, man. These Trippy, little niggas, man. These, these, what bugs me out is that these kids, they be 19, 18, and full on, fully committed relationships. But we were all the same, right? Uh, Come on, cut it out, man. I was wilding when I was 18, 19. I, I don't know about no, everybody else. I was no, wilding. And, and, and to, to his credit, though, like, nah, a bunch of people still be, be like that. He's one of the few that they've embraced relationship and also put on the forefront. There's hella rappers with girl, whole girlfriends who single on the gram, you know what I mean? But you have a real relationship. He he was vulnerable enough to expose like, yeah, I'm gonna show myself loving someone. And again, I'm not trying to blame her because who knows exactly that's what how, That's the only reason I questioned you saying disloyal. You're not that in a no, relationship, no, no. but no, you no, could yeah. say it's no, personal. She is disloyal for me with 6 That's not your business. <laughs> that's not your business though. <laughs> nah, it was on the gram. It's my business now. But it's his business. <laughs> Okay. It, 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 if I see my ex-girlfriend with my enemy in bed on Instagram, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, you're not trippy though. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right, but anyway, right. I know point he was is hurt. the album is good. He was and, and I get to I hear him literally like give those emotions to the, through the album over a nice soundtrack. I like it. Okay. Trippy, you get five gold stars from hey, me, bro. Okay. okay, all right. Five gold stars. That's what's up. I'm rocking right with. now. That's like three projects in a row that we like. Okay, guys. This. Oh, I was about to say this week. Actually, I don't think it's the most heralded week in terms of um like releases. Good word, good word. I know my vocabulary is very 
You know what I mean? His emotions <laughs> and his vocabulary are expanding. It's great. <laughs> but, no, but I feel like these albums haven't been like, oh, shit, we can't wait for this. But, like, we're getting a lot of albums that are kind of shooting beyond our expectations. Yeah, I, Dirt it. did it. Yeah. Um, T Grizzly. Mm -hmm. Look, T -Grizzly. You know, I think, I, you know what I think that is, too? Because they're not building, they're not building the buzz off the anticipation. Like, for mm -hmm. me, I wasn't... And t I wouldn't say I was anticipating Dirk's pride, like Dirk's album, but it was like when it came, it was like, yo, this is actually good. Same with T Grizzly, it came, it kind of fell out of nowhere, but it's like people emphasize more on the music, so I'm all for that. Hey man, loyalty before royalty, man. That's my mind dream, your man. business, Trippy. Hope you're all loyalty good. Great album. before mind your royalty. Yeah, I ain't gonna front. Trippy, wicked. That's my joint <laughs> too, man. Trippy surprised me because I wasn't a big a big fan, but I, I actually like this. I could respect this. The next time, if I break up with someone, I'm playing this shit. Real facts. He the day we get a you see the way he's if, going. If y'all going up. through a breakup, y'all got to no, know. I'm telling you, it felt like I needed to break up with someone, too. Wow. Enjoy it a little bit more. It's good. No, I agree <laughs> with you. Good. It is a good album. I'm just mm, stunned okay. at you, not at Trippy, putting out a good project, Ack. Yes. Negative Energy with Cody Shane. Salute to Cody Shane as well. Yeah, that Cody song's Shane. fire. That joint was dope. Wow. All right, let's see if we can keep this run going. All right, so another project we got this weekend was from Lil Peep. Uh, so we got his first official posthumous album. So now this is the um, sequel to his debut album with Shop last year. It's called Come Over When You're Sober Part 2. Uh, 11 songs, no features on this one. Um, if you want to talk about emotional, absolutely. This goes to some dark places. What do you guys think about this one? Honestly, I'm going to keep it all the way up being... Can't elaborate too much because I'm not excited for Peep's music. Like I never was really a fan of his music. I never like listened to it. I just can't. I, I don't. I couldn't get into it overall. You know how I say that term sometimes. Mm -hmm. This is just not for me. Mm -hmm. This is one of those projects that's just not for me. Like I because certain certain music and I understand like where we was at with trippy shit and like going through breakups and all of that. But some of this music I feel like I'm not sad enough to listen to. Like 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 honestly. Um, a lot of the music I, I listen to on the daily or I continue to listen to is shit that kind of relates to me and who I am or things I've been through. And those are the type of artists I get into. I can't really get into Peep's music. That's fair enough. So I'm curious about what you think. So some of this music like Peep, I feel like he's rapping about things that I feel like some of us have experienced when we're younger. But like we know saying maybe at this point in your life, you're not super identifying with that. But what do you think? I actually love this project. And I'm I'm getting critical of anything that's released posthumously because I get it secure the it's still secure the back season, but don't use like five songs and stretch it to twenty and add fifteen mm -hmm. features. You get me? This actually felt like it was finished or probably 80, 90, maybe not even ninety five percent finished before he died. Like yeah. all these songs sounded all complete. I was listening to them like Peep is. Trippy also is this what I call emo rap, like this kind of new wave, kind of new genre, like hybrid of like trap or like just say trap music, the sound. Also with like this emotional rock star element of it. Mm -hmm. And Peep is definitely at the forefront or was at the forefront of that. I love like Sex With My Ex is dope. Cry Alone is dope. Like his content, and you got to realize because he created it clearly when he was living. Um, yeah, of course he didn't. He didn't predict his demise, so like your list, some of the content might throw you off because he's he's dead now. Mm -hmm. And when you hear him with with some of the stuff about like being sad or whatever, uh, or even looking forward to his death, even though he already died, uh, it trips you out a little bit. But I'm not gonna lie, I feel like you know he's one of the artists that was robbed of just like having a long career. Like compared to other artists his age, mm -hmm. he has the most. Um, advanced or, or, or progressive sound. Like, for example, Trippy, I feel like Trippy's gonna work to that place. I feel like Little People's already there, really polished. Mm -hmm. So uh, I liked it. I liked it. It wasn't too many tracks. That's I'm it. not he, mad at it. He passed away from fentanyl, too, right? Mm hmm. Man. That's, that's, that's terrible, but yeah, I. You know, I don't have nothing to really say about, yeah. about his album because a lot of the music that I just be feeling, I, I feel like. It's hard for me to listen to sad shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, like I'm just now. I'm keeping it a hundred. It's hard for me it. to listen to sad shit. Sometimes I like one song that makes me reflect. Right? I like a, a song here, that, uh, here, or there that makes me reflect. Do you but think like, a younger Wayno would have liked this? No. Like when you were going Hell through. Hell no. Okay, no, not at Hell all. No. Period. Nah. All right. I mean, a, a younger Wayno, and I'm just being a hundred about who, me knowing myself. A younger Wayno wouldn't even listen to none of this shit just based on how he how he dressed and shit. That's who I was as a kid. Like when I was a kid. 
I didn't. I view people how they presented themselves. Where were you like, at the point in time, like when Cuddy, like 2009, when Cuddy was I starting love, to release? All right, so Cuddy, when Cuddy released in 2000, I was 26. Like mentally, where were you at? Where was I at? I mean, like I was just on my grind. Like I was trying to, for all the things that's going on in my life today, I was trying to achieve those things, you know. So mentally, I was just at a place where, um. I was just trying to, I was figuring out who I was as a person. I uh, guess I asked that because for me, an artist like Cuddy yeah. dropped at a time when I feel like my generation was trying to figure out who we are, right? Right. So that was like very emotional music for us, that soul searching. And this is like another another step, but that's yeah. why I was just asking if at any point you thought this would resonate with you. It, it did. And for me, like, I, I'm not going to, like, Cuddy, when it comes to Cuddy, I'm really big on like really one album. That's his first album. Mm -hmm. Like uh, everything else after that. You to listen me was to kinda... the locks when you were having a bad day. Essentially, it sounds yeah. like you never listened to any sort of emotional, no, no, sad, I did, no. your heart out kind of music. No, I did. But no, I did. Emotional stuff. I do believe that yo his his sound is like really out there, yo. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't trippy. Like you can listen to instrumentals. Instrumentals alone, trippy shit sound like they're still hip hop beats. This sounds this like alt rock. All right, but but, yeah. uh, but real, yeah. real quick, right? Because I think you made a really good point about like, me listening to like the locks, even like Jeezy. Like, I feel like they make emotional music as well, but just who they speak for and how they and how they say it, it just relates to who I am. Right. Like, a lot of people, like I have friends, like Jeezy rap about homies that's in jail for life. I got friends, like close friends that's in jail for life. Mm -hmm. So those type of songs is going to resonate with me before I even... Think to listen to shit. That like makes this. complete sense. I was just you know? trying to. But like, Man on the Moon, Cuddy yeah. first album. Yeah. Insane. I love that album. I love that album. Yeah, it's interesting. It definitely feels like alt rock, but I guess he's still rapping on it, so it's interesting. But yeah, and that's what I'm saying. He was almost like trying to carve out this new genre with a way more progressive and further sound than Trippy Red, because Trippy's rapping or singing over bellowing or whatever over in over hip hop beats. His shit is. All rock melodies, even like the 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 keyboard or guitar, whatever is being played, the strings, it's definitely on some rock shit. And then you hear like a 808, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of makes people like, oh, that's still hip hop. So emo trap alternative rock. The period when we had like the Lincoln Parks and the Papa Roaches. I feel like this is not so far fetched if you remember how that era played out. But um. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Waka and Gucci, all right, some good news. So you know that Waka and Gucci fell out a few years ago. Waka's sort of been on record saying he's good, doesn't know that they will make up. It seems like he's had a change of heart. Let's take a look. We were young niggas, man, with dreams, and we really succeeded, but this game changed us. And we finna take this shit back from the big homie, man, I'm telling y'all first. Hey, Gucci, nigga, let's sit, up, let's sit the fuck down, man. All that playing over with, man. You know how to get to me, big dog. You call me. So around 2014, it seemed like this might never happen, but could this be the perfect time? Gucci's been back home, he's married, he's many projects out, a book. He seems to be in a better place. Do you think they could reconcile now? I was hoping it was a good time for the last couple of years, but just like any problems between two men, shit, when one is ready to reconcile, the other might not be. It felt like Gucci at one point was down to reconcile, and you walk up for whatever reason, he probably has his reason. We probably don't know exactly what transpired. Yeah. He was on some shit like, no, I'm straight, okay? <laughs> and obviously he's had a change of mind. Um, hopefully Gucci's in that space. I would believe he's in that space. Yeah. Gucci seems like a very happy man. He's getting a lot of money, you know what I mean? He's married. You know, he's at a very different place than a couple of years ago when they fell out. So uh, that would be cool. Uh, do I think they'll work on more music, go on tour? I think that that ship has definitely sailed. But yeah? To, yeah, I think that shit sailed. But, but Why? I, would I just don't think they needed each other. Yo, I, you know what's so crazy? I ain't gonna lie, like, I kind of agree with you there, only because, like, I don't know exactly what their their position it was with each other, why they had their fallout, but when you have fallouts with people, a lot of times, like, it can happen over business shit, but when you have a connection with somebody, it's personal. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, if they can do something, I'm all for it, but every, every relationship is not gonna be mended. And everything is not gonna go the way we always wanted to go. Of course, it would be it would be dope to see them back together. People would love to see Day and Jay and Biggs, or all a lot of people that fall out. But sometimes you, it, it's shit that you can't you can't repair. I, I'm not speaking on specifically on Gucci and Waka. Right. I'm just saying like I've gone through situations where if people know the particulars, you're not gonna feel it. Like you're not you're not gonna feel like everybody should just be cool. So gotcha. I, I, I would honestly say like I would love to see this, but if it doesn't happen, I wouldn't be surprised. All right.
No, at mean, all, though. Like, yeah. at all. Not just music. I'm just saying if they... Because Gucci might be like, I don't fucking need to talk to you. And Waka might feel resentment because of that. Because I think that was the biggest barrier. Sometimes, um, I'm just... I hope this doesn't get solved any other way. And it hasn't. Like, you know, when black men have disagreements, we solve our problems with violence. That never went there. So hopefully they can reconcile. If they don't, they can respect, respectfully leave each other each way. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, I think it's, it's a big step that he's even putting this out there. So yeah. I hope they do have this conversation to make up, even if we get no music out of it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see what else do we have. All right, so yesterday we mentioned that um, 6 9 um, Nikki and Kanye were shooting a video out in LA and there was gunfire on set. So for some reason, Chuck D <laughs> was speaking to TMZ and he basically says that he thinks Kanye should stop hanging out with. Six nine. He's like, what is an older person hanging out with a younger person anyway? Either you help the younger person or you just got to stay out of that. It's not the kid's fault, et cetera, et cetera. Do you guys think Chuck D has a good point here? Absolutely. I think he absolutely has a good point. And is Kanye uh, supposed to be giving like advice and guidance in these situations? I think, listen, I, I think that, and a lot of artists do this, like, you know, when they get older. I, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's given Six Nine some sort of advice, but like, I think he's just standing next to the heat yeah. a bit. I mean, like when I see Kanye, I I would never think for Kanye to work with an artist like a Six Nine, and that's not no shot at Six Nine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it benefits Six Nine heavily, but it's, if what do you? I I don't get it. Like honestly, I don't get it. Other than you standing next to the heat, so I don't think he has no business standing next to him, especially with the type of life that this young man is living. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you live in a life that Kanye talk about, he a family man. You know, like he's a family man. He all about his family and his children. And you with somebody that could potentially have got your ass hurt. What are you hanging with them for hmm. at this point in your career? Or what are you doing videos with somebody like that for? He ain't doing the, he ain't going to the trap. Like he, he ain't going to the trap and doing songs with Lil Baby and them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, he not doing songs with 21 Savage, none of them. So it's like, and, and they not even putting him in them type of position. So why are you hanging with him? Well, well to be fair, he, he has worked with a lot of Chicago artists with, of course, not like as as in turbulent times as that six nine is it like it's music, like if if this is I didn't see the whole thing I didn't watch the clip um, that he spoke to TMZ about so I'm strictly going off this quote if if that's the quote I'm I'm like bro that's music like I don't see them hanging out but Kanye recorded like one or two songs and then showed up to do a video that's not like yo I'm hanging with the nigga all the time yeah shit. I gotta do a video. Nikki gotta do a video. Nikki just had a, a big hit with a dude. You yeah. feel me? It's standing next to the heap. And so, niggas is getting shot at in and, Beverly Hills. And, and also, and also, like, you know, this is shit. I don't know how much Chuck D knows about 6ix9ine. This is also where people might be buying into what he's saying. 6ix9ine's like 22. Like, mm -hmm. I know we call the nigga a kid, but like, it's not like he's 15, young and wild and reckless, and Kanye is like 45. No. How old is Kanye? Like 41? Yeah. He's like 20 years older than him. He's yeah, damn near twenty years older. But now. but but music. Most of the most of the hot niggas in music right but why now. Why he doing? They're in their twenties. All right, but you you think that he genuinely just want to do music with him, or he doing music with him because six nine is hot. Now six nine is a lot of people blur the lines between. Wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Bit of, I feel like it's a bit of both. Which it's a bit of both, but everybody right? blurs the lines between dope and hot. Six nine is hot, right? Like he's hot. I don't think that Kanye working with him because he think he dope. I think he working with him because he's hot, and it's a thing to do. So I get what Chuck D is saying. Like, what you going over there for? Because now I get what you're saying about the whole music shit, but he putting he putting himself in danger, bro. Like they got they didn't get shot at in Compton. They got shot at in Beverly Hills. Okay. Okay. So what you don't have to? He, what he's saying is that you don't have to be doing music with him. Why are you? I don't think it's a hanging. I don't think that no, they're not fucking playing ice hockey together and no shit like that. But. You don't even have to do records with this nigga. I, I, th I think we like ignore like hip hop's history and act like this nigga is like the first dangerous rapper. Who he's passed. not, but that don't. We, like, it's like, he's, uh, imagine when 50 was going through all his shit and niggas like, why? 6 9 doing? is not 50. No, no, no but, but in terms of. And niggas, it was around of, 50. In terms, in terms of someone being in issues. Right. Right? Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Plus, shit, 50 was wrong with 50 niggas to make sure he wasn't hurt. Right. 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 right? And he's hot. 
I don't see why anyone would say why you're doing songs at 50 because yeah, so he's fucking hot. I guess you have to no, differentiate listen. making the music versus hanging out like yeah. this. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 Part of this sounds like he's been chilling. So what does the rest of it say? Yeah, when you're the older person and you can't even guide them or give them, you don't have the wisdom to give them, whatever, but there's not necessarily wisdom involved in music if you're strictly making records and recording videos, right? I mean, it's different if you're uh, to just, an like, extent you're kicking is. it with him. Well, to an extent is because the whole, you, you, everybody's not gonna, in, in order, and, and I've just seen a lot of like dope records be, been made in studio, a lot of dope records come from conversation. And everybody's not gonna come in and like, all right, here's the beat, you do your verse, I do my verse. So there is gonna be some wisdom that has to be passed along. No, I'm not talking about moral shit. I, I feel like when it comes to 6ix9ine, I don't, I don't feel like you could like tell him the right thing to do. Like, it, it's, he gonna do what he wanna do, regardless so of anything you give him. So I'm shooting a skit of Kanye giving 6ix9ine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, at least in my mind, I'm contextualizing what he said. Mm -hmm. And I'm also probably gonna take into account just that because Kanye's been in the media for other things. That's why Kanye getting the heat. How dare you call out Kanye when Nikki? This is Nikki's second time working with Nikki a nigga. Nikki also and got called Nick, out. Okay. Not by Chuck D, but well, a lot no, of no, people. No, no, no. What I'm right, saying right, is that right. how dare he? You talking about Chuck D, dog? No, yeah. no, but no, but, but why are you? Why is it Kanye when if we're looking at both parties here? Nikki, because he a nigga that's going to the White House and shit. That's why he's calling him out. Nikki, Nikki's is defending him being in certain places. Nikki's saying she was trying to get him. Like Nikki is more of the person I mean, who every, would be if, if we're considering because I consider these as work friends. These are work friends. Y'all got to get a record done. Mm -hmm. I don't see them nowhere else. Like at least you seen him and Nikki at going to some fashion show. I've never seen him and Kanye just kicking at Calabasas. Like playing with baby I mean, Norton. we probably wouldn't see that anyway. Like, we, we probably wouldn't see that if it was happening so, anyway. So you don't think it's a little unfair that he's getting called out when just for working with a nigga? Because I, I just feel like I feel like he's working with him incentive based on just trying to get hot. I don't think like I don't think Which that, every rapper does. Not not all the time. No, 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 no. Not no six because nine, but but they I feel, work with the like, new rappers. Yeah, but um, guess what? Guess what? A lot of niggas will work with six six nine ain't working with niggas. A lot of niggas will work with 6ix9ine if he... 6ix9ine knows how hot he is and he knows that if he... He fucking says something to me on Instagram and I got 5,000 followers in a day. So he knows his value of standing next to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. He knows his value of standing next to somebody. I don't think that he's working with 6ix9ine because he thinks he's dope. And a lot of people work with people because they think they dope. But not because... Hip-hop is all about staying next to... We said... We talked about this. Everybody so, stands with dope next, people. To, next to the heat. Everybody wants to work with little Baby. A anybody who's hot... You see Drake jumping next to him. Drake is the hottest in the game. So it's just like I get it. This kid, there's a lot of things going on Who's around the kid? him. Or see, I even get caught up in calling him a kid, right? <laughs> this man, right? Six nine, like you see, acts like we act like a kid. Because it's a different. Anyway. I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's a different conversation if somebody would got shot. That's that's the only reason why I think Chuck D is even saying anything. Because, like I said, none of, none of them shots hit nobody. But let's say they do. If it does hit somebody, they're going to say, what the fuck was you fucking with this nigga for in the first place? Same shit with yourself. Same shit with yourself. It's all about who you put yourself around. Now, if you know that that's your man, I got friends that be in the streets and shit that at certain points in time it's like, oh, get, hit me up in passing. But I don't think we should chill around each other because I don't want nothing to happen to you. That's a friend. Now, if somebody gets hurt based on you just antagonizing people and talking shit. You know it's the first thing. If Kanye West would have got shot, you know it's the first thing I'll say. Why the fuck is he even doing songs with this nigga, knowing that he got this type of shit going on in California? So should no one be doing collabs with him? I'm not saying that nobody shouldn't shouldn't do, but we're I, talking I about. Rather, I would have rather that be in the statement than just like getting at Kanye. But I, but but you gotta. I, but I feel like he was picking on Kanye. It's, I don't think it's picking on Kanye because at the same time you gotta understand who Chuck D is. Chuck D is not a person that's gonna pick on somebody. He's an elder statesman in this. Right? I don't no. think he's I don't think he's picking on him. I'm but, just but thinking I, I he's do think Kanye's recent history plays a part into him getting singled out as it may, but to I, the other it, person. It may, but you have to look we talking about recent events. We're not talking about the because he didn't he didn't say this after they we seen a picture of them chilling in the studio together, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody had nothing to say about that. The, the, I don't know if it was chilling, I was working, we know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but but you get you get what I'm saying, yeah. right? Because there was a shooting that happened. Yeah, nobody got hit by the grace of God. If a fucking PA or whomever was working on that set where the guy shot, then they'd have been like, why is he even doing records with somebody like this? And you have to take that into account. No, no. So, so, so and, and I'm not dismissing your whole point. I 100% like any artist who's going to work with 6ix9ine, do videos, whatever, that is something you should think about and the risk that comes with it, right? Right. But when you frame it in, 
You're 40, he's 20, it's hip hop. Niggas stand next to the Heat. You, the, if the Heat's 15, <laughs> niggas is next to 15. I'm right, sorry. But, but That's I, what happens. I, I'm just saying. We're, so, 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 right. so, so, that, so, so angling it like it's weird that Kanye gets, Kanye did a record with Pump. You get me? You know why? Uh, I, I get that. To the heat. I understand that, but Pump ain't got niggas trying to hurt him. Okay. That's, that's, like, so so the, the point I was making still stands. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about the age thing, right? That's like really doesn't even make sense in this thing, right? You're just saying, why are some of y'all artists that are established have to go mess with this guy who clearly has violence and issues around him? And, and that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Okay, we spent a lot of time on that. I know. I feel like <laughs> there's an agreement and a disagreement somewhere in there, but we're going to move on. Right? That's what we're here for. Is that for. cool? Great. That's cool. <laughs> right? That's what we're here for. Bro, sorry. I'm struggling today. <laughs> uh, but on some like good Kanye news, you guys know that a lot of people have been losing their homes and also evacuating their homes in Cali because of the wildfires. Very sad. So according to TMZ, Kanye and Kim actually hired a private team of firefighters to help out with not only their mansion, but their neighbor's mansion, which is pretty dope. That's great. So shout out to them for that one. Yeah, that's dope. Rich nigga problems, man. And rich nigga blessings, too. Glad for glad for Kim. Yo, Kim, yo, Kim, no matter how much flag she gets, man, they be holding it down, bro. They be holding it down. Thank you, academics. Thank you, academics. All right. <laughs> so remember, shit. Tyler. I wish I could get some, like, private firefighters to just fight the fire around my crib. One day, that's what you're working towards, right? So well, I don't even know where the fires are, like, hitting it. Like, All right. I, okay. So uh, we mentioned that Tally, the creator, had his camp vlogged on festival this past weekend. Uh, Kids He Goes performed. That's Kanye and Cuddy, of course. Now, Lord is not happy about this. So after seeing their performance, um, she got on social media and shared images from one of her shows at Coachella, essentially saying that they copied her set. Um, I mean, if you look closely, you can definitely see some similarities here, the sort of glass box that they're suspended in with Lord and Kids See Ghosts use it. Do you guys think this is a big deal? She says, I'm proud of the work I do, and it's flattering when other artists feel inspired by it to the extent that they choose to try it on themselves, but don't steal, not from women or anyone else, not in 2018 or ever. I don't think this was a woman's issue yeah, necessarily. Like, talking? if we're just saying artistry and stealing, fine. What do you guys think about this? Uh, who, so what? So what they stole your shit? I could be no. I'm, I don't give a fuck. No. So what? Because you want to know why? Because we always giving, we always letting. Let's keep it hundred. We always letting white people steal shit all the time. No, I'm no. I'm I'm gonna be. I'm unapologetic about that. They steal a lot of our shit, and we and we let a lot of shit rock. So so fucking what? They stole your little box with the glass on it. So what? Who gives a fuck? So what? Who cares? Not having no, because shit. that shit is whack. Because now, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, it's cool to say it. It's cool to say, oh, he stole my idea. So what? Do what you're gonna do. If someone did this to your uh, artist, would you, know, you care you, if someone stole you know, your? You know, I really don't so give a what? fuck about this. But um, cause Kanye is involved, I gotta kind of give a fuck about it because. Kanye is a nigga who be on Instagram ranting and raving about credit and, mm -hmm. and doing all that type of shit. And they have a, a good relationship, by the way. It's not like they previously had any issues, it's, Lord and Kanye. No, no, but, I'm, but again, when it's Kanye who <clears throat> will die over like some credit, it could be for whatever, fashion or music, mm -hmm. uh, I got to say, okay, she has a point. Now, I will say, this is the second time Kanye's Don't done it. Don't steal from women. He because Kanye, Kanye did say... Or not, I don't think he said, but when he had that whole, like, the flat stage that was floating as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, he's done floating shit before. But he had the flat stage that was floating, I think the last tour that the he Yeezus did. Tour yeah, the one that he had the mental breakdown on. And like, oh, there was okay. lifting it above people and right. shit and yeah. people underneath. Shit. I remember there was so many people giving him credit, like, Kai is the first to ever do it. Get to, get to find out. There was an African artist. Uh, I follow him. I believe his name was like Casper. I don't know how to pr pronounce his last name. He was the first to do it. Mm. And, yeah, you do feel a little offended. Again, I don't know what's the origin. This is probably some stage manager design type of people conversation. But, yeah, I'm going to get a little offended if, like, you're acting like you did some shit first. When is I he acting like that? Did he do a, a rant saying this is the first time ever done? Like, in yeah, what are the rules for no, this? No, no, so, and, right, and, like, and I don't think she aggressively called him out. She was just saying, hey, listen, what? Let's, let's, let's. You don't think she aggressively called him out? Uh, Did you see what everything she just said? I mean, no, she didn't. No, no, no. She, she was saying, let's let's keep in mind where she came from. And yeah, I don't condone people stealing shit. So what's the move here? Hold on, hold on. So if you had an artist who put on a very elaborate show, you planned it for months, and then three months later you saw someone bigger doing the same, almost the same exact thing, you wouldn't care? Would this be your reaction? 
I don't know, but I'm talking about this right <laughs> yeah, now. I, can't wait now. I don't you know, but like I'm talking about this dollars right in state now. Design yeah. and, and, and fucking somebody else just and rips off what? your shit. I, I, we talking about this right now. We talking about this situation in particular. Is this like, like putting out music like once it's out there and it inspires other people? You can't get mad. If I mean, you put out at the same similar? time too. At the same time, and of course, you know, Lord is a big artist, so yeah. it's chances are they probably did see it. But a lot of people have a lot of the same ideas. You know what I mean? A lot of people have a lot of the same ideas, and a, a lot of times you subconsciously influenced by things that you might have think you came up with and it might have been the smallest thing that you've seen. Like Kanye could have drew some shit and then been like, oh shit, that's the set design. Mm -hmm. And then not knowing that he probably seen the shit last year or some shit like that. But so what? I don't care. <laughs> Let him steal her shit. Fuck it. All right, wait up. All right, uh, we we did our num act by the numbers yesterday, but I feel like we gotta give a shout out to Metro Boomin. Um, we all really like the album. Not all heroes wear capes, and it debuted at number one on the Billboard chart, ninety nine thousand first week. Ooh, act. Ooh. impressive, yeah. That's shout out good. To Metro. Yeah, it's a pretty good album. So, like, when you see good numbers for a good album, can't be mad. At it. For a producer, though, that's for producer. pretty. Metro Boomin has come so far. Yep. I think I think a lot of people like. When I was on Black Twitter having fun years ago, like now nah, Metro Boomin was a kid that was jumping in conversations and telling people like, "Yo, I got beats," you know what I mean, or yeah. saying, "Yo, I I do beats." And I remember like I used to talk to him a lot on Twitter. And Wait, one of the last conversations, don't tell me Metro was one of them niggas that every time I tweet something out, they're like, "Yo, <laughs> I got beats." I'd be like, "No, no, no, no. hello, I good morning in, world, hello, good morning world," type beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I went nah, no, bro. Metro wasn't like that. What, I never thought them niggas ever what, made what, it. What I would say is no, no. What I would say is that Metro wasn't like that, but. The way I had, like, me and him started following each other on, on Twitter was he said something like, he was like, yo, Wayne always saying shit to inspire young niggas. And I just followed him because I, I did not even know that his name was Metro Beats. It wasn't Metro, but always Metro something. I don't, it wasn't Metro Booming at the time. And then I found out that he was doing beats for Trouble and uh, Alley Boy and all of them. And then we started building a rapport. And then one of the last conversations we had, because he's from St. Louis, a lot of people think he's from Atlanta, was him saying, yo, I'm about to go to Atlanta for college. I think he was going to Clark. Mm -hmm. So I'm about, about to go to college. And then after that, he meets Future, the rest is history. So he's come, he was pushing himself online. So he's a testament to that. Like, I, I get what you're saying with the whole, <laughs> you know what I mean? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling good type beat, <laughs> motherfuckers. But at the same time, a lot, of, a lot of these kids don't know where to start at. And I think that if people look at Metro's, not just his track record, but, track record, but his journey, mm -hmm. you can see how he used social media to help him out, you know? And... Look at that. Look up now. This is only like six years ago. You know what I mean? Look, look up now. Now he's selling 99. He's selling more than rappers, fucking rappers. rappers. Like, very, real impressive, shit. very impressive. Well, well, he's laying the blueprint for the new way how producers <clears throat> remain relevant. It, it's about building a brand now. Like, niggas used to get hot off their beat and their sound and they're super producers, but now the sound changes so quickly. There's a new Take Keith every fucking year. Um, and shit, if you're only gonna do it by beats, like he built a brand, like Absolutely. that became the a drops, brand and the, an institution. Yeah. And even like shit, not only him, DJ Esco, I felt like DJ Esco kind of revolutionized or like kind of updated how DJs work with an artist yeah. and put out even music them their damn selves. So uh, th that whole little, I don't, I'm not gonna call it camp, but like that section of hip hop, like. Yeah. There's a lot to be learned because there's a blueprint of how you do it now. They are having an era, and what I was gonna say is, I think sometimes with a lot of the New York guys, instead of going to Atlanta and just saying, "All right, I'm gonna go to Atlanta and make these records down there," don't just go down there to make the music. Go down there and get the information. Like if you got the access to a Coach K or a P, mm -hmm. pull up on like, and you can have a conversation with them. Pull up on them and get the game as to how to run the business. Because not only did Metro Boomin sell this much records, he sold it on his label. Yeah. That's on his imprint through, I think, Republic. You know, so he he put it out himself. Like, he's paying himself, essentially. So. so recently we spoke, one of the fan questions was asking, it was about producers, I remember, but there's one we didn't do, which was just, I think, saying, can producers ever be as big as rappers are? Now, we know the uh, DJs like Skrillex and Diplo, they sort of transcend uh, this artistry and they become huge, but in rap it's not necessarily the same. Mm -hmm. So now, do you guys see someone like a Metro? Could they be as big as a, like a young thug? I, is I mean, he already, would we already say he is or could he get there? But that's been happening, like, because when you look at, th when you think about that, before, think about Pharrell. I mean, look, but that's different, so, bro. That's different. What's different? Like, we compare Metro to Pharrell? Like, well, I'm but not a Pharrell is I'm, very rare. But right? I'm saying Pharrell is very Pharrell's rare. But, an artist, too. 
he's an artist, but what I'm saying is, is this, right? What I, <clears throat> the, the point that I'm trying to make is this, is producers have been as big as artists. Everybody didn't take Pharrell's music serious when he first started putting out music, as far as himself. A lot, he, he went through the same struggles as a Kanye. Play them beats, my nigga. Ain't nobody really trying to hear you rap. Yeah, but, but so, still, he was I'm, branded as an artist. Oh, Whether it was through NERD, like, like he, visually... Before at NERD him, and they were the Neptunes, Chad and Pharrell Williams. I'm not talking about NERD. Before he got the NERD, he had to have a lot of success with being a Neptune. And Nori was the first person to put him on a hook. He, people wasn't looking for Pharrell to give them, even when he did that record, it still took time for him to get his shit off. I'm not talking about as that. far as, what, what I'm, happened? I'm not arguing that. I'm saying if there is no artist element, I don't think Pharrell being that person that we're thinking he is, right? Or we know he is. It doesn't happen. Well, she so, said so could be. Is, Not, we should, we should talking about could be. Well, but she's well, just trying well, to say because unless, Metro, unless, unless Metro becomes an artist, right. like just it, it's like how who can we compare him to then? Yo, the, the producer in like EDM world is like a star NBA player. Like you see their face all the time because really they're really the embodiment of the music that they're playing. The producer is in rap. Is that to be honest? Like I don't even know how Tay Keith look, but he making the hottest shit. To be honest, you only hear his drop. So from there, the, you start off there, and it's like, how do you build a brand that we know you? And especially if you're not an artist, you're not rapping as well, or you don't give a hook, or you don't even do a Swiss beats, you give an ad lib. How how are we gonna get to know you? So what happens well, is these do, these do help, but then there's even another level to get to, like, could you get to where even Khaled gets? Even I know Khaled's a DJ, but could you get to the point where? Like Khaled could have a whole concert. Mm -hmm. Well, I could call I call Khaled a producer as well, only because I've it seen is, I, I've is. seen I've seen Khaled. He's not have a record. He's a producer. Yeah, producer and production comes with arrangement, and I've seen Khaled say, "Yo, have a one verse and say I'm gonna get this verse, that verse, that verse, that verse." And he's like, "Nigga, it's Monday," and then Tuesday night he has everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so what I was trying to what, what I was trying to get at before you jumped in was saying that. If Metro was to jump in the lane of doing what Pharrell did, maybe it could start out with hooks. You know, because a lot of producers always come to me and say, well, how can I brand myself? And if you're not DJing, it's kind of hard to brand yourself as a producer. Because with this, anybody, they're almost like football players. You know, like they're not seen. Right. You know, they're not seen. So it's hard to get endorsements. It's hard to, to, to get bookings or anything when all you do is like be kind of behind the scenes. But if they start, well, I was going to say, if Metro starts jumping on hooks. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Metro got some records with him rapping. I wonder, that's what I'm saying. I wonder if he doesn't start doing that, if he can keep this going. I, honestly, I don't, Absolutely. Think, I, I don't think he should do that. I think what he should do, which he already does, is he does these dope DJ sets. Mm -hmm. And I think he, you just have, you got to make yourself more public. You get me? Like, you see, Khaled always been that guy with the personality that it would come out or whatever, but the platform snaps, I really brought him to another level. Like, like most of these guys, because they're, they're behind the scenes like that, I've never seen, uh, have I seen him do an interview? I don't think I've ever seen Metro sure? talk. Yeah. Like, and, and, and that's a huge part. The thing about an artist is that other than the music, there's that star element. You got to be a star. Like, you have to be a star if you want people to gravitate towards you. Mm. And as a producer, we're used to them being the quiet person. Yeah, we hear your drop, but we don't, like, I didn't even know Boy Wonder was that well-spoken or was that cool until, like, we actually started chopping it up because, yeah, you hear his beats, but maybe the brand is in there and also that face recognition yeah. in there as well. Well, I mean, we got so many different platforms now where you got like podcasts where people get their point across but because a person like a Metro, he might not be comfortable with going up to every media outlet and speaking. Mm -hmm. So I think, give it time, yep. he's only like 23 not years old. Not questioning his blueprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's killing it right now, yeah, you know? Yeah. So just like waiting no, to see what he does next. Yeah, no, I think he got the, the only thing I'm saying, if, <clears throat> unless that's really already within his like um his whole list of like uh talents in terms of making hooks don't just try some shit try some shit you could you could go the djing route um and you could still like really succeed because that's where the brands are getting like built up like you could keep doing a djing thing because look at pierre born pierre born making a hot beast mm -hmm. hot beast hot beast now this thing just start rapping and people are like bro well you gotta you have, hear that i mean you gotta have a transition and that's what i was saying about like that's what I meant about the whole Pharrell, you know what I mean? Because Pharrell had a transition. He didn't just outright just start rapping. Even like Teddy Riley's, all of these people that laid those foundations, I think Metro, and yeah, I will say compare them 
only only because I'm comparing where Metro is at now. He's like five years in, solidified himself as a producer, has built a brand. If he wanted to start rapping or he wanted to start doing hooks, we'd be a little bit more receptive to him only because we know the brand, more than a Pierre Bourne. I think what happens is when a kid catches a hit record, they immediately say, you know what, I'm going to start rapping too. And they haven't done a, the, the whole concept, jack, jack of all trades, master the none. I think you got to master production before you start getting into the music. So we have time for one fan question before we go. This one's from Tommy John. Uh, the question is, Cole and Drake have both been giving fire features in 2018. Who has had the better features this year? Obviously, this is a pretty long list. Um, we could compare. Let me know what you guys think. I'll just call out some of the big ones. Uh, Drake, of course, Look Alive. He was on Walk It, Talk It. Yes, Indeed, Never Recover. He did the Bad Bunny collab. Sickle Mode, of course. Um, so for J. Cole, we had Zendaya with Cause. He did Bob Boat with Royce 5'9". He collaborated with J-Rock. Uh, with Boss Wale, he did Black Pretty Little Fears. Um, so I feel like J. Cole has about 10. J. Cole, Drake has about 10 for the year. Cole has about nine. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Who had the best? Who had the most fire features, according to our question? Hmm. Now you could go second. Champagne. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Drake had a lot of great features, but at the same time, I got to look at who he was featured on because I don't feel like a, a lot of the features he was featured on was with people that couldn't keep up with him, period. Hmm. A lot of people couldn't keep up with him. Um, Got to take that into account. Interesting. Okay. Got to take that into account. But he did have a lot of great features. Like, I love Look Alive. Like, his verse on Look Alive. Um, What's another one? Walk It Like I Talk It. I yeah. fuck with that. Sickle Mode? Sickle Mode. Of course. Like, Sickle Mode. Like, Sickle Mode is going to live forever. Mm. Like, that song is going to live forever. Um, Never Recover. Never Recover it. was cool, but it was kind of, like, throwaway-ish. You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of throwaway-ish because it wasn't really, it wasn't a standout drink. It's a standout drink because he's on there with Baby and Gunna, but... Mm. Fuego. But is it... I mean, it, it's good. It's a good drink verse. But as far as Cole's drink, I just think that Cole had more competition mm -hmm. on the features he had, which was, like, the Bablo Boat, which is one of my favorite drinks. Yeah. Um, you were the, Rhapsody. Yeah, the drink with Rhapsody. The drink on, on J-Rock's album was a, was, a, was a tough one. Uh, And while late, like... I just felt like he challenged himself a bit more. He had some range. Yeah, I felt like Drake, like year. Drake hovered on every record that he was on to the point where it sounded like it was his record. Hmm. You know, but that that's, that last line alone and the discussion for me was he took the record. The <laughs> yeah, he took you know the record. But look at Drake look at, featuring Drake. Look, my, I'm the feature. It's look my at, look at the level of talent that's on record with, with him. With, are we still saying this if Drake is doing features with Cole or Kendrick or Meek or any of these guys that's keeping up with him? lyrically this year mm. you know i think that's a different conversation but i can't discount what drake has done this year great features and cold great features so it's kind of like I, it's, it's reasons why i like drake's more but then it's reasons why i like cold's more so it's kind of 50 50 for me it's not even a discussion for me cold of course come, it's not cold come again bro uh, by the way cold did have some dope shit but when drake and his feature bag like this man I'm glad. One time he stopped doing feature after the Meek shit. When he's in his feature bag like this, it's a wrap. It's, a, it's his best year doing features because uh, we judge like his career trajectory off like if he's killing features. Yeah. And I felt 2011, I think that was a peak. That's when he dropped Take Care. And then 2013, he had a good run doing some joints. But then this year or within the last year, he'd been really going in. Yeah, this is not even a competition. It's not a competition. It's, it's a definitely competition. a competition. It's definitely a competition, and that and that's the only reason. Bro, why you I can't it. recite one of these damn J Cole verses. You, you didn't listen lie. to none of it. Don't tell me what I can't recite. Lie. Don't tell me what I can't recite, I my nigga. Could you? Don't tell me what I can't could recite. You? Don't tell me what I can't recite. All right, my you, ask you. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. We're not gonna go in. There. I'm not about to rap on here. Right? No, no, no like, I'm not telling you to rap. But don't, I'm asking you. Absolutely, is, absolutely, J. absolutely. Cole? The thing is, is that <laughs> you not even listening. I don't believe I'm you even listening to none of this shit. I'm gonna let you guys be for ten more seconds, and I'm gonna wrap the show. Yeah, I don't even think you listen to none of this shit. I did. No, you don't. Like my God, I listen to Pretty Little Fears. It's cool, but come on, man. When champagne off on Pretty Little Fears, over, bro. Did you listen to Bob Lobo? No. Two. No, I did. I don't believe him. What? Nigga, we talked about All it All right, there we go. All right, ladies let's and get about another it. Another episode of Everyday Struggle. Tune in tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. here on Complex. This nigga only listens to Drake. He listens to nobody else. <laughs> Drake, don't unblock this nigga. <laughs>